So this is an instructional video on how to install your third generation 100 series Land Cruiser rear bumper. Um, we have here in front of us our rear bumper shell, our two carriers, and our installation kit. At this point in time, you should have already inspected any possible damage. Unfortunately, that could have happened along the process. Uh, we packed these things very, very well. So any damage can easily be seen from the outside of the box. And even when the box is damaged many times, the bumper itself is in good shape. Um, still installed here, you can see the protective layer that helps for any scuffing or rubbing to protect the bumper um, for any further damage along the, the way or the path to get to your house. Um, the next step we're going to do is you would want to take all your hardware kit and there will be a bill of materials and double check your hardware kit as well as familiarize yourself with all the different parts and make sure you got everything you're not missing everything things are packed really well we take a lot of care to ensure that you get what you're looking for most of everything is labeled with a part number here and the uh, associated hardware is generally along with whatever bracket is going to be installed so pretty straightforward these are some of the things you should expect to find in in your uh, hardware kit number, bearings and races for your hubs, gas struts, mounting brackets along with hardware for the wing supports, all your rubber bumpers and associated hardware including hardware for your nylon pads, nylon pads, shims, License plate light, wire and harness, associated hardware, and finally your latch assembly. In addition to your hardware kit, on your swing outs, included in the hub of the swing outs is going to be a reminder that the, the greaser is inside the hub. That needs to be installed as well. Each hub will have a single greaser on it, so don't misplace that. So we're going to go through and show you everything it takes to get this installed in here. Um, my helper here, Brian, is already getting started. Good morning. Getting some, uh, um, what are you using there, Brian? <clears throat> Little Zep 45 to go ahead and get all the uh, bolts and everything loosened up, and this way they come out as easy as possible. At this point in time, we are working on a 25-year-old car. There's some extra steps that need to happen compared to working on a brand new car, and we'll try to include some of that in this, in this video as well. So the first place we're going to start is removing all the factory options or factory accessories here. Uh, this is the factory bumper. This truck was equipped with a factory Toyota receiver. Everything comes off pretty easy. Uh, we have some 10 millimeter head hardware that holds the bumper in the wheel well. We have some additional hardware that holds the bumper cover to the frame rails and some brackets. That's all going to come off. Um, when attempting to remove the factory bolts on the bottom of the frame that hold the receiver, if you don't have a receiver, those same bolts are going to hold your factory recovery gear. I usually like to start with a breaker bar and not use impact tools. These holes can be jeopardized with corrosion depending on where in the country you live and how the vehicle has been used. And starting with a breaker bar is going to ensure or help ensure that you're not going to break those off and you can work them out slowly. Uh, same thing with this bolt here front, up front that is used for the wing support. So you're going to take extra care to make sure these come out. Now the bolts themselves will not be reused. None of the hardware that's holding this bumper on will be reused, but we're going to ensure that we can save the threads there. Um, on the factory spare tire winch, Brian, are you going to choose to leave this in or are you going to take it out? Uh, we know with our Slee Off-Road bumper that we can retain that if we want to use a secondary spare. Um, if we are going to uh, add a secondary fuel tank and auxiliary fuel tank at a later date, we may choose to take that out now or just to clean up some of the clutter. What are you going to prefer on this? I'm going to choose to clean up some of the clutter and go ahead and get that, those items removed out now while I've got the vehicle up in the air. Perfect. So we're going to get started getting the stuff all taken out and clean up the frame. So you can see here this vehicle is equipped with a 7-pin trailer plug. In this case, it's actually a 7-pin plus a 4-pin. This vehicle is a 2001 Land Cruiser. It would have never come with a factory Toyota 7-pin. On the 2003 to 2007 Lexus and Land Cruisers, they did come with a factory OE 7-pin. Should your vehicle fall into that window, <coughs> included with the bumper is a 7-pin relocation kit to get it out of harm's way. In this case, because we have an aftermarket 7-pin, the bull pattern and the shape is a little different. So Brian's going to be on his own as far as locating the seven pin connector onto the new bumper and the new bracket. Well, Brian, since this is your old truck today, I guess you're the one that has to figure out how to take all these bolts and make sure that everything's nice and clean. If there's any damage on the threads, good luck, buddy. 
I'm on it. <laughs> so we're going to start by assembling or pre-assembling our swing outs. Uh, as we spoke about before, made sure and got our grease irks. Those were located inside of our hub assemblies. Grease irks are installed on the back side of the hubs, nice and clean here. Uh, we broke out our latch equipment as well as our wedges. Um, being that everything is powder coated and all the threads are capped off during powder coat, those are all raw steel. So what we choose to do during our assembly is use a little bit of grease. We just have a little can with some grease in it with a tinner's brush. Um, we apply a little bit of grease to the threads. This is to ensure that things go in nice and smoothly. This is kind of a trick that we do here at the shop, uh, as well as the grease will apply to the unpowder coated surfaces to keep any corrosion down. If this would need to be disassembled at a later date, that grease will also assist in that. So we got a little bit of grease that added to the threads. On our latch catch and our latch assembly, we have our eight pieces of hardware here. They are all the same length. These Allen head cap screw, the mini cap screw heads on here. So they're all the same length, four in the catch, four in the handle. There's no washers in this guy. On our wedges, our wedges use a similar Allen head screw. However, if you notice, the Allen head screw for the wedges is longer. The short guys go on the latch, long guys on the wedges. The wedges do get washers. These fit in here nice and easily. You can see here that it takes up all the room. And then lastly, we have our hole for our set screws. So keep track of these. We're gonna install these later after we're adjusting the latch, but the set screws go into these holes here. Same thing, I like to put a little, little bit of grease on the threads, on our wedge bolts, as well as on our set screws. Uh, continuing on, we have our additional hardware here. These are all of our rubber stoppers. These are also our <coughs> mounts or our pivots for our gas shocks. So we're going to go ahead and just loosely install all this and get the swing arms fully prepped and ready to install on the bumper once we have the bumper installed. So we're installing our latch onto our tire carrier swing out. We're using the small headed Allen screws. These are the three quarter length. You'll have four of these for the latch and again four more for the latch catch. Just ensure that you do not confuse the three quarter inch length hardware for the latch with the one inch long length for the aluminum wedges. So it turns out we do have a situation here where we have a little bit of the remaining goo or the silicone rubber stoppers that go into these holes. There's a little bit of silicone left in there. The threads are not going in easily. So we have our tap here. We're gonna use our tap magic because everybody knows you never go in dry. And we'll get those holes cleaned up, get that latch installed. So we're continuing to clean out the threads, make sure that nice, everything's nice and clean so we don't get any galling um, on our uh, aluminum keepers for our wiring harness for our license plate light. This hardware is 1032, so using a 1032 tap to kind of clean things up here before we finally insert our stainless steel bolts. So we're installing our last uh, <coughs> electrical keeper here. Um, just want to comment on here that uh, Although we try to do everything in our power to ensure that these threads and these holes are ready to go when you get this an easy install, don't, if you find some hesitation or resistance to the hardware, don't force it in. Be prepared to tap things out. Keep in mind these products are made as a raw steel item. Everything is tapped. Holes are, in, or bolts are inserted into the holes before they go into the final prepping process um, and coating process. However, that process in, includes sandblasting, which moves things. They get an acid dip on them. Then they go through and they get a two layers of powder coat, both a um, high rich primer powder coat and a, um, the final black powder coat. They go through the oven 450 degrees. So things do have a tendency to distort and move. Um, so just be prepared to tap things out to ensure that the process goes nice and easily for you when inserting all the hardware. So we're now gonna pre-assemble our hubs with our bearings into our hub assembly. Um, we are choosing to use a Molly grease. You can use any type of grease that you want as these vehicles sit in the sun without the grease mixing around, they do have a tendency to separate the grease, the liquids from the solids. We have found that the Molly grease has less of a tendency to do that, although it still does it, but feel free to use whatever grease you find works well for you. What's very important is one, making sure the bearing is very well lubed. Here we're using a bearing luber, make sure that it pushes the grease through all the crevices to make sure it's lubed properly. Secondly, the important part is the inside of this hub is raw steel, we can't powder coat that. So we wanna make sure and get a nice film of grease, not only on the races, but throughout the entire hub assembly. We're using our grease gun to pump some grease through our grease zerk, and then using our fingers to get in there and get it all over the hub. You also wanna continue that same idea through the spindles on the bumper. 
The spindles are also raw steel, so you want to make sure they get a nice coating on them. Although the grease is used as a lubricant for the bearings, more importantly, the grease is used to keep the moisture and condensation from corroding and rusting the spindle and hub assembly. So we have two sizes of bearings on the hub assemblies. We have a larger diameter and a smaller diameter. The larger diameter goes in the bottom of the spindle or the hub. The, the smaller of the two bearings goes on the top. So we're taking our larger bearing. I got this guy all lubed up for us. We're going to set it in here into the lower race. Big bearing, big race, bottom of the hub. The lower bearing is where it gets the seal. We're going to take our seal. It installs with the rubber portion of the seal outwards or downwards. We're going to get it somewhat squared up in here by hand. It doesn't take a whole lot of pressure. You can use a mallet or a hammer. And we're going to come in and you're just going to work the seal all the way around. They do have a tendency to kind of walk in there. So you're just going to take a little bit of patience. Again, holding your mouth just right. We're going to work that around. You know the seal is fully inserted when the seal is flush with the face of the hub. This service here is supposed to be done once or twice a year, depending on the environment that you're in. You can easily remove the cap, apply grease with the, through the greaser here, and watch it come through the top. If you do not reply the, remove the cap, you have to be careful not to hydraulic the seal out the bottom when adding grease. In case you don't service this appropriately, and you do find when you take it apart, everything is rusted and coming apart, we do offer a full service kit. These two holes here are set screws. The set screws hold in the races. The new service kit will include new races. So these set screws will have to be removed to get those races out. They can be lightly tapped from the inside out to access those. But everything is serviceable and available as new parts. So we are all prepped with our ladder swing arm here to install onto the bumper. Just to touch base with everything. We got our grease arc installed. We got our wire clips installed with our two Allen head stainless steel 1032 bolts here. We have our ball end for our hydraulic gas shock. The ball end is installed with the ball downwards with the nuts on top. This allows the gas shock to nestle in this cavity here. On the end here, the locking pin is pre-installed. Just double check that everything is tight with that. We have our rubber snubber installed. This may have to be removed as we may add some shims as we're going through the adjustment process of the latch. Finally, we have our wedges installed. The two Allen head screws are tight but not completely finalized. Our set screw is installed but yet not tight so we can adjust this as we go through the latch procedure. Here we have our tire carrier all prepped and ready to go just to go over everything. We have our grease arc installed. We have our wire clips installed with the stainless steel screws. Again we have our ball end installed for our gas shock. The ball end is mounted rearwards or downwards with our double nuts or jam nuts on here. We initially have our rubber stopper installed. We've installed it without any type of washers. We may go back and put some shims in there as we're adjusting our latch. Our pin is installed. Our pin should have come installed from Slee Off Road. However, double check, make sure that's tight. We have our latch installed with our four Allen head screws there. And lastly, we have our wedge installed as we discussed prior. We're about ready to put this on the bumper. So continuing on pre-prepping everything, we have our rear bumper here. We're gonna go ahead and loosely install our nylon pads. I've chosen to just kind of cut away our protective material here so I can work around this and not worry about damaging it. Uh, we have our nylon pads, flat washers, and our Allen head. These are stainless steel Allen head cap screws. You can see we applied a little bit of grease here, right through the washer. The threads are captured in the bottom of the bumper, so there's nothing that you have to hold on the backside. And we're just going to go ahead and loosely install these. When it comes time to adjust the swing outs, we may need to add some shims to the bottom. So we're just going to go ahead and loosely install these so everything's in place and we can continue on the final adjustment at a later time. So we finalized the pre-installation of our nylon pads at a later time when we go to adjust the swing outs. We'll use the included shims on the bottom of these to ensure that the height is just right. So, but right now they're just pre-installed. We've also finished the installation of our catch here using our Allen head bolts. Um, again, talking about the powder coat process, we try to do the best job possible to ensure that the spindle is nice and clean and free of any powder coat residue. This bottom edge on the spindle 
is where our seal will ride. So we want to ver visually inspect this, ensure that there's nothing that's going to impede the seal properly sealing on here. This is more or less what it's going to look like once you have that installed into the hub. So it's going to seal nicely on there. So you want to have a little bit of area that there's no powder coat from the bottom of the TIG weld, you can see, which is powder coated to the seal. There will be some grease on here. So a little variance in having some uncoated material here is no big deal. There'll be grease from the seal that gets on there and ensure that there is no corrosion concerns in the future. So our next step is installing the rubber snubber on the wing, both left and right of our rear bumper shell. We have a rubber snubber, which is threaded on the backside. We're using the half inch, the shorter of the two options of the 5 16 bolts, along with a flat washer and lock washer. We'll install the lock washer on here, then our flat washer. This passes through the rear of the bumper into the rubber snubber, tighten down from there. Again, you do this on both sides. Keep in mind there are longer versions, which is a three quarter inch long 5 16 bolt, and this is used should you need to do any shimming in the future. This also goes for the rubber snubbers on the swing outs. So you will have some extra hardware left over depending on what your bumper needs and requires during adjustment. So here we have all of our mounting hardware for our bumper channel laid out. As we talked about before, you are going to have some extras that you end up not using on your specific year. Here we see in the blue color, these are our factory Toyota 14 millimeter bolts. These are going to go in from the bottom of the frame. We have uh, two that go in towards the rear of the frame. Go here on the mounting of the, the uh, bumper channel itself. These are our 14 mils. Again, 2000 and newer. The other four are going to go into the rear mounting holes of our wing support brackets. Included on here is these washers that don't come off. Additionally, you're going to use these larger washers that install here for more support, more service area on the bottom. These are our two Allen head bolts. Our Allen head cap screws are going in from the center of the rear of the channel. They also get locking washers as well as traditional washers. So you'll use those. Again, 0304, you may not be able to use these because the holes in the frame will be different. Moving on here, we have our shorter half inch bolts. These also have two nuts, two locking washers, and four total washers. These are going to mount to the side of the frame on your bumper install. So you have 14s on the bottom, you have a half inch on the side. These are going to go through the frame and use nuts on them. Moving here for our longer half inch bolts, again, four half inch bolts, four washers, four lock washers, and eight total large washers. These are going to mount through our wing support brackets as well as our wings. So they're going to sandwich those guys together. Lastly on here, you'll see the fine thread. These are 12 millimeter bolts. Again, you will use these on the wing support brackets onto the frame, only 98 and 99, and you will not use these. So pretty straightforward. You're going to have four 14 mil bolts left over. Or we're going to have 12 millimeter bolts left over. Do you expect to have extra hardware? So Brian, you did everything right. You put penetrating fluid on everything. You used the breaker bar. We're still running into some challenges here, huh? Still had two broken bolts, one on each side. So got everything cleared out now. Soaked a little bit more with penetrating oil. I'm using the old map gas to get everything heated up. Hopefully it'll work its way out and get out. So don't forget your safety glasses and remember where the fire extinguisher is. Right by the door. Yep. <laughs> I'll go ahead and get that for you. <laughs> Thanks. So Brian, fortunately with this truck, the frame rails are open and exposed. Worst case scenario, you can't get that remaining portion of the bolt out. Can we go ahead and build a nut plate and go in there or some kind of other fabrication? Absolutely. Yeah, this way we can see just right inside there the, the second stud that's broken in there. It is nice and open, so we do have some room in case we need to get a little creative and create a nut plate or something in there. It is nice that they left it open for us. All right, so we got everything cleaned up here. Brian did a great job getting the broken bolts out and cleaned up. Some of the differences that we see on the frame rails are these two bolts are always 14 mil on all the years. The forward bolt that has the wing support bracket, this bolt hole is 12 millimeters. If it is a 98 or 99 Land Cruiser, 2000 onwards, this bolt is 14 millimeters. We do give you new hardware to cover both of those different options. On the rear section here, once the factory bumper is removed, you can see these four bolt holes. Uh, these four bolt holes are the two tops need to be cleaned up. They're used to capture the new bumper. In certain eras, generally 2003, 2004 on the Lexus only, there may be a square hole cut in this from Toyota or from Lexus as a receiver mount. When that square hole is here, these bolts are located in a different location. The bumper will still fit, but unfortunately we cannot utilize those mounting holes. So keep that in mind as you're going through the install. Other than that, Everything is cleaned. Brian's going to final clean these holes here. Everything else has been cleaned off. If you have a bumper that needs 
or sorry, if you have a truck that needs a little bit of uh, paint correction due to corrosion, this is a good time to go ahead and spray paint this, maybe wire wheel it and clean it all up because it will now be buried behind our new bumper. So we're going to go ahead and run some masking tape. This area of the vehicle can possibly be touched and scratched, so we're going to protect this. Obviously, Brian isn't too worried about it. He uses his truck. He's had a little boo-boo here, but uh, you know, working in a shop, we have vehicles come in in various conditions, people taking care of them in various ways. So we're going to go ahead and run some tape here. I would recommend doing this just to ensure that you don't damage the vehicle by just sliding on your new bumper shell. So we're ready to install our bumper shell. The back of the vehicle has all been prepped. Brian has cleaned and tapped all of our existing threaded holes. We know those are clean. He did a nice fresh paint on the cross member, so that's going to be buried behind the bumper. That'll keep corrosion down here in the future. We have our ring, wing support brackets ready to go, but not installed in the vehicle yet. So bumper channel all prepped. We have our ball ends for our gas shocks. We have our nylon pads pre-installed. We have our catch for our latch, as well as we have our rubber stoppers for both of our swing outs. So Brian, I think we're all ready to get this thing installed on here. Let's do it. All right, with this loosely on here, we're gonna go and run one or two of the bolts on the bottom and get that started. And then we can get the wing support brackets all lined up. So with the bumper shell installed in the frame, our four bolts on the bottom loosely installed, we still have a little bit of movement here. We're gonna go to the rear bolts. The rear bolts have some slots up and down, but not much room side to side. So we can move the bumper side to side to center it on the vehicle and get our Allen head screws installed. So with the bumper loosely installed on the frame, we're installing our wing support brackets. These two holes can be either a 14 millimeter or a 12 millimeter, depending on the year of the vehicle. In this case, we're working on a 2000 Land Cruiser. These are 14 millimeter from 2000 through 2007. In case you have a 1998 or 1999, these same hole locations are a 12 mil. That hardware is included in the kit, so you will have extras depending on the year of your vehicle. These holes have slots in them that allow the wing support brackets to be adjusted back and forth. You also have slots here that allow the wing supports themselves to be adjusted up and down. So we're gonna get our wing support brackets installed loosely. We're gonna suck up our bumper shell. Once that is adjusted, we're gonna come back through and make sure the wing support bracket is tightened against this tab. And then finally, eyeballing from the side of the vehicle, we can have some adjustment by pulling or pushing on the bumper wing to tighten up our bumper shell to wing support brackets. So we've tightened up our bumper bolts. That's pulled the bumper all the way up against the frame. We also have our rear centering bolts loosely tightened, lightly tightened towards the frame. That's pulled the bumper into the frame. Our rear bolts have pulled the bumper up against the frame. Now we're moving on to our wing support brackets. Our wing support brackets need to be pushed against the frame to be square and then pushed forward against the bumper shell itself. We're now installing the bumper wing to wing support brackets. We have a washer and a bolt from the front towards the rear. Get two more flat washers. Two lock washers. And then finally our two nuts. Once we have our wing support bolts loosely installed, we can now come over and tighten up all the bolts in the bottom of the frame, wing support and bumper, make sure those are nice and snug. Once those are nice and snug, we're gonna eyeball the wing to the body line of the truck, do some adjustment with pressure, and once it's located where we want, we'll snug these guys up. All right, we got the bumper installed. We're gonna look at our body line from our bumper to the body of the vehicle. Now's a good time to move the tape so you can see what you're doing. With the bolts that mount, the wing supports loose, you still have some room to do some fine adjustment. Having a helper come over, by putting a little pressure on the wing, we can eyeball to make sure we're parallel. Brian, if you want to get on the side of the tire here, and if you want to just slightly pull down, we can even that out, and then I can go ahead and snug these guys up. Perfect, so we got this adjusted nice. You want to have an even gap between the top of the bumper and the bottom of the body line. We would call this two fat fingers is the official measurement for this. Now, one thing that comes up a lot when installing steel bumpers on vehicles, this bumper is mounted right to the frame. This body is sitting on rubber bushings throughout the truck. When you go off road, things are gonna bend and move and twist independently. So anytime installing a steel bumper, you wanna ensure there's a nice gap here so that you don't have any crashing of the bumper into the body when you're off road. We have a little bit of adjustment design in here. 
whenever you're welding something on steel, it goes through all the different temperatures. Uh, there can be a little bit of twisting, so we have allowed some, for some fine tuning adjustment in here, which we just proved. So we came over to the other side, we're gonna perform the same process we did on the passenger side. And uh, we came up with a new method of adjustment, new method of measurement. Turns out it's one Brian fat thumb is what we're looking for. It's a chunky thumb. So nice and smooth the whole way across. Once we have our bumper fully tightened, installed, we wanna go back through and just double check all of our gaps. Obviously with the body and the bumper moving independent of each other, we wanna make sure that we have a decent amount of gap. Once everything has already been adjusted, we have designed some adjustment into the bumper to where if you go back through and loosen up the mount <coughs> frame mounting bolts and the wing support brackets, as a whole, we can adjust the bumper back and forth slightly. Okay. On this install, we found that the bumper channel was fairly close to the quarter panel. So we went through and loosened up all the lower bolts. Brian is prying on the lower bracket. We can see it's opening our gap here. With Brian prying, we're gonna go ahead and tighten up our bumper support, uh, the 14 mil bolts on the bottom and make sure that we can adjust that hole. So here's where we install the final mounting hardware for the bumper channel to the frame. We have a small hole up here on the side of the frame. It lines up with an existing hole that was already there prevalent from Toyota. We're using the last of our 716s bolts. I like to take the bolt from the outside, hold it in place. On the inside, we're installing a lock washer, a standard washer, and a nut. So holding the bolt and washer in with my left hand, I can come in with my two fingers from the back side of the cross member. Unfortunately, you got to hold your mouth just right and feel it out. You can get the washer installed on the bolt loosely. Come in, get your lock washer. Get him lined up on the threads. Finally, come back with your nut. Good news is if you drop it, it's really easy to access it. Get your nut lined up with the threads. Putting a little pressure against the nut and the threads, you can come back and with your other hand, turn the bolt and get everything started. Socket, I'm choosing to use a locking extension to keep things from getting lost in the frame. We can come between the two halves of the cross member in the rear to hold our new nut. Come on here from the back side. I can use a wrench and get this guy tightened up. So with the wings adjusted and all the lower framed bolts tight, I want to come back through and ensure that we don't forget to tighten our Allen head cap screws in the back. All right, Brian, swing out number one. All right. So we're gonna drop that down on the spindle. Make sure that lower bearing is seated onto the spindle itself. We'll just rest it on the nylon pad for now. If you want to come hold this, I'll grab the upper bearing, nut, and washer. This is the smaller of the two bearings. The smaller bearing always goes on the top of the hub. It goes in there pretty easily. From there, we're using our washer. And finally, our castle nut. You want the castle nut upwards for the cotter pin later. We're gonna put a little pressure on this. We're gonna go ahead and open the carrier slightly. Brian can put a little upwards and downward pressure just to make sure we get this seated. We're going to come back as he's putting some pressure on it. And we want to get it pretty snug. You're never going to be able to tighten these bearings to the point where they don't move. They will wear in over time. And we want a little bit drag on them if possible. So we're not trying to break this thing off, but we're going to get it nice and snug. So we have quite a bit of pressure on here now. We're making sure that we're not going to break the thing off. This thing is still swings in and out pretty nicely. You can feel there's a little bit of resistance on it. We don't yet have the weight of the tire on. From here, we'll go continue on with the process and come back and double check our preload before we're installing our cotter pin. For the ladder carrier, we're just gonna continue the same process we did for the tire carrier. We gotta drop down the spindle, install our small bearing. And pull it towards you, there you go. Have a large washer. Castle nut upwards. And again, we're just going to add the initial pressure and take out any slop in the bearings. There we are. So we're now ready to install our tire carrier onto the tire carrier swing out. We have our hardware lined out here. What you'll notice is for 
mounting the tire carrier mount onto the swing out. We have our four bolts, our four nylock, as well as we have our smaller washers. For installing the tire carrier physical mount to our adjustment here, these guys, we have our three, nut, three bolts, three nuts, and then we use the larger diameter washer. So larger go through the slots. We have our smaller guys to mount to the swing out itself. This is gonna mount from the back side on our swing arm, comes in here. Now you have a multitude of adjustment holes. We generally like to install the tire on the taller hole, which gives us better departure angle. You may choose to adjust this to the lower setting. This is to give you better visibility out the back window should you have a smaller tire on the back. In addition to the tire mount, this can be used for rotor packs. The aluminum rotor packs brackets can be mounted in these holes if you want to use a rotor packs back here instead of the tire. There's also a multitude of holes if you want to install something other than a rotor packs or a tire. But traditionally speaking, 99% of the time, we're using this for a spare tire. Once we have the bracket installed from the back side of the tire carrier, we now have our tire hub. Our tire hub has these slots for adjustment for a multitude of different tire widths and diameters. Uh, this it needs to be installed from the top. Once installed, we can install our large washers, nylock nut and bolt, get those started in there. And then we can talk about how to set the adjustment height so that we properly preload our spare tire. So we're gonna measure the back space or the preload of the spare tire onto the rear bumper. You're gonna take your spare tire, flip it on its face, use a straight edge across the bulge of the tire sidewall. And then we're gonna to measure to the mounting surface of the tire up to the straight edge. In this case, looks like we have about seven and, sorry. In this case, we have about six and three quarters inches. We're looking for about eighth to quarter inch of preload. So take that number, subtract eighth to a quarter inch. Once we've made our measurement on our spare tire, we're gonna come back to our bumper and measure from the outside face to the outside face. We're gonna take the measurement we got from our tire from here to here, and then subtract the distance so that we have preload on here. We're looking for eighth to a quarter less distance so the sidewall will preload against the bumper. Now that we have our depth adjusted, we're ready to install our spare tire. Interesting point, the studs on our all slea off-road tire carriers are factory Toyota studs. If you are ever to damage one of these, you can knock it out just like you would on one of the wheel hub and purchase that right from your Toyota dealer. In addition to replacing these with factory Toyota, should you be out in the bush and break a wheel stud, we have three extras here. You can knock one of those out, use it right on your vehicle. So included with your slea off-road rear bumper is factory Toyota lug nuts. If installing an aftermarket wheel like we are here, you will need to supply new lug nuts matching the other lug nuts on your vehicle, which are not included in the rear bumper. In this case, we have our extended shank 14 mil conical lug nuts appropriate for our wheel. Cool, Brian, thanks for lifting this thing up and getting it lined up for me. You did a great job. Look, hubcaps even like located the right way. Let's talk about our gas struts. This is our gas strut. At this point, we should have our ball ends installed in our bumper and we should have our ball end installed in our swing out, making sure the ball end is facing downwards towards the ground. If this is installed wrongly, when you close this, it will damage the gas strut. So downwards here, the, on the gas strut itself, we have two female ball ends on each female ball end, there is a locking spring. The locking spring has a rounded end. We push up on that, it pops out, and then it has a little stem that goes through these two little holes. This is what keeps everything locked in place. There is one at either end. So installing this onto our bumper, we're gonna go to our ball end. There's a small spring. We're installing it with the shock body, gas strut body towards the bumper. We can just with a, some light pressure, you can hear that snap in. From here, we're gonna install the other end onto the swing out. On our swing arm, there's some adjustment we can do in here. With putting some pressure on the swing arm to compress the rubber bumper, we wanna ensure that we're not trying to pull the strut apart. Although we all guarantee that we have the best practice and we don't open the swing arm and swing it forward when your buddy or someone else tries to help you, we wanna ensure that that does happen. We're not trying to break our strut. Included in our kit, are these small washers. These small washers are installed here between the strut end and the ball end to change the length of this. So we're gonna go ahead and take that off. We're gonna start with one washer. And 
and we're going to check check our length here. So putting quite a bit of pressure on this, we can see that we want to go a little bit longer. We can also install the washers at the other end so we're not running out of threads. And when you tighten these up, remember that the shaft can rotate separate from the body. So if you can grab this, pull it over. I would say that we want to add one more washer here. Right off. We don't recommend running more than two washers on either end, otherwise you start running limited on threads. So quite a bit of pressure. And that sets our length for us. As we are adjusting the length of the gas shock or gas strut, we really prefer none to one washer per side, although they can accept up to two. Keep in mind as you're adjusting that gas strut length, the other part of adjusting the length is the rubber snubber that's on the rear wing of the bumper. Rubber snubber includes washers. The washers can be installed behind it. As you extend the length of this rubber snubber, it will stop the swing out tire carrier a little sooner and that will also help adjust the length of your strut. Keep in mind as you add washers, there's also longer bolts in the kit uh, to give you enough length to go into the back of the snubber along with that washer to make up the difference. So again, you will end up with extra hardware because we've given you a lot of hardware to compensate for a lot of adjustment through the process. Uh, but it's the same washers, same longer bolt for the rubber snubbers in this location or if you need the washers on the swing outs as well. So everything is included in there. Once we have our gas strut installed and adjusted, lastly, we want to reinstall our locking clips. We have to find a tiny little hole that's still left there. Make sure that we go through both areas so it comes out the other end and then rotate this over, snaps into place. That way it can never come back out. So our license plate kit includes our license plate. Our mounting nuts are installed on the license plate light itself. We have our extension of wire and we have our butt connectors. The butt connectors will connect the tail that's on the license plate light to the included extension. We have a bracket that's pre-installed here with some slots in it. A license plate, e license plate light easily installs through these holes. Locates here, has some adjustment to it. From here, the wire will route over the swing arm, down to our wire clips, along the back side of the swing out, and down through this crevice, down into the back of the vehicle. Lastly, in our license plate clip, we have some zip ties. We have four Allen head screws and four nylock nuts. You'll just remove your factory license plate from your tailgate, install it in the appropriate place on a rear bumper using the, uh, these four hardware here. Um, the tail end of the wire that comes with the vehicle will just be secured universally with these zip ties. And that'll take care of most everything for your license plate. So once we have finalized the adjustment on our, on our hub assemblies, we have the tire on, we've opened and closed them multiple times. We've set the preload and aligned the castle nut with the opening and the spindle. We can finalize the installation of our caps. Here's our cotter pins, they'll go right through. If you've worked with a castle nut before on any trailer, they're gonna work in the same way. Go through the castle nut. Just all through here. You're gonna bend them up out of the way to lock them in place. If you have too long of a tail, you can always take your side cutters and trim them down the tail so there's no room. You wanna keep this packaging pretty tight and just have the small guy bend over on the top. We want to verify the inside of our cap and make sure that none of the cotter pin is protruding into this opening here. Once we have our cotter pin taken care of, included is our O-ring. Our roaming has a nice recess that goes here on the cap. You can also use a little bit of grease to hold that in place additionally, but it kind of presses in place here. And then pretty simple, our cap is threaded here. Inside of here is threaded as well. It just screws in. You want to use some non-marring pliers. Typically at the shop here, we use a Nipex parallel smooth jaw plier. You just don't want to mess up the nice finish on this. Uh, it screws into place. If you have any hesitation with that, also come back through and double check that none of the powder coat has gotten into the threads here. We at Slee Off Road do a good job of trying to clean that up, but sometimes there is a little bit of discrepancy in getting that started, but that'll finish off your install for your hub assembly. Should you have a vehicle with a factory seven pin trailer plug, 
This bracket is used to relocate it out of harm's way. We expect you to be using your vehicle off-road. These two holes here, which are to the left of the driver's side of center, line up with the two holes in the bracket. It installs with the factory captured holes here. Pretty straightforward. It mounts here. Your factory receiver will, will mount upwards so that the harness is coming out the top and keep that out of harm's way. Keep in mind, you can only use this bracket if you do not intend of you to retain a factory spare tire under the vehicle. If you do, this bracket will need to come off. Secondly, we have our tail of our license plate wire here. Our license plate wire, if you're looking at the wire colors on the light, there is a white wire and a brown wire. The brown wire is your 12 volt, your white wire is your ground. Your tail is black and white. Connect the black to the brown. Now your black is your power, white is your ground. There is a multitude of different places on different trucks to power this off of. If you do have a trailer harness, that is a great place to grab your tail lights from. Otherwise, there are some connectors under, above the muffler on certain, air, in certain vehicles. Using your uh, test light or your multimeter, you want to verify that you have proper power and ground. Also underneath here, you can see these cutouts. If you choose to use this bumper for any type of towing, you're going to do that on your own choice. These are intended for your safety chains. You're going to use what's called a quick connect coupler. Those can be sourced at pretty much any hardware store. The quick connect coupler looks like a piece of safety chain with a collar on the side. Those will easily pass through here, come through, lock down the coupler. They'll hang down and allow you to easily pass your safety chains through. Otherwise, you would remove those completely to keep anything from dragging or hanging down from underneath the vehicle. If using the receiver tube for a traditional receiver hitch, keep in mind that to keep the clearance up and high, this does bottom out into the back of the cross member. Please verify and double check that your receiver hitch will slide in. You may have to cut the back of your receiver hitch off to ensure that it doesn't protrude into the back of the cross member to where you can still get the pinning installed. So check, check that ahead of time, make sure you're good to go. So once you have your bearing hubs properly assembled and proper tension on the bearings and the nut, the next step is to add the accessory weight you have on the two swing arms. Here we have the spare tire. That's going to have a bit of an effect on how the height is of the swing arm. Secondly, if you're installing the jerry can basket, the jerry cans, any water or fuel that you're going to have in those, you want that weight on these. Additionally, that'll set the height on your second swing arm. Only once the weight is on can you go through and set the height on your nylon pads with the shims, set the angles of the wedges or the height of the wedges, as well as set the preload on the latch mechanism. Please see the separate video of going through all the adjustment of this process. Brian, we got your bumper all completed on your truck. What do you think? I love it. Absolutely love it. So excited to see the updated version and happy to have it. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you're happy because Christo and I are out of here. You got to clean up this big mess. <laughs> see you tomorrow. <laughs> see you.